All right. Yay. Oh, there we go. All right. Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? See. Si. See. Si. Okay. Evelyn's iPad. Evelyn, how are you? Perdón. <laughs> Muy bien, gracias. <laughs> okay. Hablas español. Muy bien. Excelente. Okay. Entonces, ¿dónde vives? En Oregon, o los Estados Unidos. Muy bien. Excelente. Bienvenida. Gracias. Okay. Y otras. Hoy tenemos Chet, Carol, Manish, Bob. <coughs> Long time no see, Bob. Now you're unmuted. <laughs> good, good. Carol. Peggy. ¿Cómo estás? Excelente. Feliz. Bueno. Sí. ¿Y tú? Usted tiene una camisa muy interesante. It is, uh, es el verano en Arizona. Sí, pero es verano en New Jersey, too. Okay. Sí. Aquí tenemos a Salia, Chet, Good, Aló, Glenn, Babu. Nancy is still having camera problems. Don't know what it is. Um, I don't have a clue. Okay. Well, we love you anyway. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Paul's here. It's good. Okay. <sighs> We're waiting for the man of the hour. There he is. We cannot do this without Bryce. Bryce, uh, for new people, uh, James Roseboro, who you see coming in, uh, we call him Bryce just because we have two Jameses. But he is the gentleman who creates all of the examples that we go through. Okay. Entonces, how is everybody? Speak up. Go ahead. Tell us what's new. Happy holiday. Happy Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Uh, aquí en los Estados Unidos uh, es un día de fiesta para todo el país. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. How many? Okay. <laughs> here at here at Sherlingo, we did not have the day off. Um, oh. Uh huh. Yeah. I know the management's terrible. Um, and, uh, uh, but did everybody enjoy their day? Oh, yes. Anything? Yeah. Nosotros estamos en la playa. Ah, mm. ¿Fuiste a la playa? Sí. Sí, excelente. Okay. Con mis nietos. Ajá. Un buen Fue un buen día. ¿Ellos son pequeños o grandes? No, son grandes. Sí. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Excelente. Mi tía, ¿puede ayudarme con un problema? Por supuesto. Estamos aquí. Okay. ¿Cómo se dice? I hurt my shoulder. I'm trying to get better with rehab. Yo trato de decir eso a un hombre a... Uh, in a gym, boy, the problem is the knee. I'm going to put it at the bottom of the file, Anna. Okay, I was writing that in the chat window. You can still do that. Okay, uh, we're going to, I'm going to jump right in and share the window. All right. Um, now, let me just uh, reconfigure my screen. Is this what uh, you said, Chad? I hurt my shoulder. I'm trying to get better with rehab. Okay. So, 
we are here to help you, but guess or don't guess. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> me hace daño a mi hombro y ahora estoy tratando mejor me con rehab. Okay, excellent. Day. Um, it's close. Say hombro. Yeah, very good. Um, hombro, hombro. Right. So in Spanish, the O is always an O. It's always the O sound and the H is not pronounced. Okay. Uh, hombro. Okay, so say it again. Me lastime el hombro. Estoy tratando de recuperarme con rehabil rehabilitación, rehabilitación. Muy bien, muy bien. Okay. Lastime, because it's past tense. Lastime. What's the infinitive of lastime? You tell me. <laughs> You're being hard, James. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, yes. I'm sorry. What what was what did he say before? He's asking what is the infinitive, the verb. Oh, okay. What got is it. that? What is that verb? Lastime. Lastime. Oh, I got it. Lastima. Yeah. Lastima. Lastima. What does it, what Lastima does that mean? Say. I can't just say it, so lastima. Hurt. <laughs> okay. Hurt. Mm -hmm. Lastima. Hurt. You know how. I hurt uh, my <laughs> shoulder. I'm sure you've heard. Uh, I think yeah. this needs to be passed as a mind run. I hurt it. I hurt. Uh, no, I a mind run. I hurt his past tense already. Exactly. That's what happened, right? She would die. Yeah, it's just, I hurt. Pero eso es me lastimo el hombro. Ya, yeah, sí, pero hurt ya es pasado. So there's no ED? No. no okay. I, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay. That's easy to remember. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Okay, lastima. Right. Um, I'm sure you've heard que lastima. Like, yeah. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. All right. Estoy tratando de... Okay, and the next one is say recuperarme, recuperarme. Recuperarme. Mm -hmm. And we should be getting uh, one of the Spanish speakers to say that, not me. Asalia. Good say good job. say yeah. that whole sentence, please. Me lastimé el hombro. Estoy tratando de recuperarme con, rehabil perdón, con rehabilitación. Rehabilitación. Gracias. You're welcome. Okay, good. Anybody else have uh, anything they want to do here? Bob, are you uh, you're you're on mute? You're on mute, Bob. You're on you're on mute, buddy. Okay, there I am. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, could you say uh, me duele? Me duele. Yeah. Or is that it hurts? They do it, so. Yeah. Um, it's different. It's different. Uh, now. Okay. Yeah, because when you say me duele, it's you are feeling or you are in pain, you know? You're in pain. Okay. That's why I wondered. Okay. Thank yes. you. Right. You're welcome. I have that down pat, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's yes, you can, Bob. Think of the mm -hmm. difference. Like, um, my shoulder is in pain. Okay. Versus my shoulder hurts. But this is, I hurt my shoulder. I injured it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, um, see, there's this thing in Spanish, like, I broke my arm. Okay. In Spanish, you would never say that literally. I broke my arm because that would mean that you did it intentionally. I didn't like my arm, so I broke it. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. So it's just it's just a thing, right? Okay. Okay. So same thing for so for English, um, I hurt my shoulder. You didn't do it on purpose, right? Right. 
right, Chet? Where'd you go? No. Okay. Lord, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Great. Um, so, how's the how is the uh, cómo va la re rehabilitación? Ahora me siento mucho más bien. Mucho uh, mejor. Mucho, mucho mejor. Sí. Ahora. Ahora me estoy mucho mejor. Muy bien. Ah, uh, ah, uh, so much. <clears throat> yo tengo, yo tengo controlado en mi hombro. Good. Más de noventa por ciento. Muy bien, muy bien. Okay. All right, good job. Anybody <laughs> else have, uh, have uh, something like this? We're all learning. Mm. Estamos aprendiendo. All right, I do want to welcome anybody that's new. Um, Peggy, have we seen you before? You turned off your camera. Once, once before. Okay, all right. Well, welcome, welcome. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> All right, so uh, I'm going to stop sharing for a minute and give Bryce a minute to tee up what we're doing here today. Bryce, you want to... Que lastima does not really mean it hurts. It means it's, it's a pity. It's sad. It's, um, you know, it's Just, a shame. That is true, it's, Carol. It's yeah, not a yeah. literal translation of that. Yes, that is true. I was just looking for a word that people, you know, they might have heard. It's similar, uh -huh. degree, it's, right? It's lastima versus lastimarse. Okay. Lastimar versus lastimarse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mostly just said that for like memory. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, Bryce, what are we doing today? Uh, what we're doing is just dealing with uh, prepositions of location. Um, that's that's basically it. Um, you know, al lado de, next to, just things things like that, things dealing with location or going towards this direction, um, you know, the side of, in front of, behind, you know, things like that. So, uh -huh. uh, that's fantastic. English. I got English. I got the idea because Steve had said something about it. <laughs> okay. So great. With the uh, it, it started with the discussion between me and Azalea. Yes. So. Yeah. And All Azalea right. Said something about it. So I'm like, okay, that's. <clears throat> okay. I did not expect it to happen this week. So. That's <laughs> 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 All right. So um, if you are new here, just very quickly, uh, our goal is just to help people move forward. We have English speakers and Spanish speakers here together, um, whoever. And so what we're going to do uh, when I share this document again is look at some examples that Bryce has created for us. And we're just gonna play uh, to translate and uh, use something called the example framework uh, probably um, to Take these sentences, translate them, but then try and make them our own somehow. Okay. Um, you are absolutely welcome to participate or just hang back and listen. Uh, whatever's comfortable for you. There's no pressure. Um, super comfortable, super nice people. And we're glad you're here, especially on a holiday. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, let's share the screen again. <clears throat> de, 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 de. Okie dokie. Who would like to start us off? I think. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yep, I, was thinking, I was thinking Carol. <laughs> <laughs> what is your delante de ti? Um, can you go in front of me? Or you can you, go in front you, of me. You can. Yeah. You can go not in front of me. Not a question. Because it's not a question. 
You know, I was just thinking about this. Uh, I don't know why, but just like 15 minutes ago, I was thinking about uh, a video I saw in Japan, Japanese people in a, in a queue and uh, a mature woman came and uh, was going to get in the back of the line, but a young woman offered her her spot, like you can get in front of me. But unlike here, that young woman didn't just let the person in front, but actually said, you can have my spot. And then that woman went to the back of the line. Wow. Okay. So yeah. then everybody in line went behind her. <laughs> so she ended up in the same spot. Uh, well, that's amazing. That doesn't happen in a lot. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. happen in New York City. It doesn't happen here. And it, well, was, okay, no. it was so um it was such a message in there, you know? Okay. I don't know how to say that, describe that in Spanish. No sé cómo cómo puedo Okay. Ayúdame. Ana, ayúdame. Comparte, por favor. <laughs> Ok, bien, recientemente vio un video donde una mujer japonesa de entrada de edad, una señora mayor, estaba haciendo fila, ok, y una mujer que estaba detrás de ella, joven, le dijo, uh, que estaba delante de ella, perdón, le dijo que podía tomar su asiento, digo, su, su, su lugar. Entonces lo hicieron, intercambiaron los lugares, pero la mujer, en lugar de intercambiar el lugar, lo que hizo fue irse al final de la fila. Okay. Entonces los demás al ver lo que ella había hecho, eh, se fueron todos en el orden que estaban detrás de ella para que ella pudiera mantener su lugar tal y como estaba anteriormente. Es that cool? I think it was easy in Japanese. You, you, know, you know what's a funny, uh, interesting thing about that, which is James, what you said about the people, all the people were really nice and did that. I've seen in some places, well, like, for example, a person cuts in some places a person cuts and they might get feedback from like everybody in the line you know yes. like what's the, what's the saying se cuelan se cuelan you know, something like that you know, some, i've heard people say stuff like that when people quit but that's just you know, that's just amazing because most of the time you quit and you cut in the line people look at you like they just want to that's right they should. <laughs> right so um <clears throat> try it sometime <laughs> right? Try it sometimes. See what happens. I don't know. It's so true. That, that okay. will happen. Yes, that will. I will. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'm going to try that the next time I do I'm at the movie theater or something. Okay. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Okay. People, okay. You can go in front of me. Okay. Um, Carol did that. Oh, I have a question for the first one. Sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. so, can I say you can go ahead of me? Is that correct? Yes. yes? Absolutely. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. <clears throat> Great. I have a question. Mm -hmm. The way I see that phrase, and I'm not sure if I'm correct or not, I see it as can you go ahead of me. Oh, so that would be a question, right? Well, it doesn't oh, where this e mean can and then go ahead delante de me. That's the way I see it. I maybe I'm wrong. It's so I don't even think it's a question, <laughs> right? If it has a question, it's one of those that where you know it's the same whether it's a statement or uh I heard. A sta if it's a question mark on it, then it's a question. It's, it's just, you know, one of those that or a statement. So let's yeah. so let's go ahead and do the whole thing. Right? So we're gonna take this. <clears throat> right. And uh, uh I have it here someplace, right? So this one, Paul. And you uh Okay, so you're asking somebody to, they're, they're behind you and they're driving you crazy. And so you say, can you go in front of me? <laughs> okay, right? Like, don't follow me. Uh, yes, and sorry again. So I think it depends the, like, sure. how, how do you say it? Like, like, you can go in front of me. Puedes ir enfrente de mí. 
And for a question, puedes ir en frente de mí? It's like you you change the tone, the tone of your. Yes, okay, <laughs> great. Uh, sometimes you might hear some of us say, "Don't follow me." Okay, yes. puedes ir. Afirmación, puedes ir. Pregunta. All right. Uh, I parked. Quién? Come on. Who? Why are you guys shy today? <laughs> I can volunteer. Go for it. Um, I parked behind the theater. In part, uh, a parquet. They trust del teatro. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. So this this uh, verb parquear, right? It's, 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 a, it's a regional slang kind of. <laughs> Tell us about it, Bryce. Why do we not use that? Well, it's 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 not a real. I mean, a lot of people say it, but you know, like people say instead of estacionamiento, estacionamiento words hard for me sometimes. It, people will say parqueo, you know, because it's it's easier to say. Um, <laughs> it's, it sounds Spanish, that's why. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, but uh, Manish, it's uh, so Anna's giving you the correct. You might hear. Uh, something with parquear, but it's not, it's slang. Think of it as slang, okay? Yeah. Uh, or regional, like like Bryce said. Uh, you'll hear mm -hmm. more in some places than other places. But it's definitely not, like, it's not recognized by the Spanish Language Academy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Those stuffy guys. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but isn't hmm. a parking lot sometimes called a parquedero? Parquedero? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. El pagadero. El pagadero. It is. Yeah. It's a parking lot. Yeah. yeah. Voy yeah. a parquear. Voy El parquear mi carro. Donde está. Mm -hmm. Donde está yeah. You will hear it. Uh, just trying to let people know that. Uh, yeah, so, estacion, estacionar um, would be. What? Yeah. You're going to hear that also. <clears throat> Great. I parked behind the theater. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, <clears throat> so Manisha, uh, try and do a, a similar sentence. Say say something the same but different. Um, me estacioné uh, al lado de la escuela. Awesome. Great. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Great. Well, okay. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Jump in. Who's next? I even got the the papo the autos. There's a cat underneath the automobile. That's why I think. Yeah. There is. There is a cat below the automobile, I guess. Yeah. Automobile or automobile. automobile. The floor. The I'm, under. The, I'm gonna say under. car. Yeah. Now I put uh, uh, well, out. Well, because the no, yeah. bajo means lower, right? Of the automobile, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's I un gato de bajo de otro. Automobile. Yeah, there's car under the automobile. Yeah, yep. you can say below. Below. Yeah. So, yeah, in this case, uh, in English, we you would absolutely hear under and below. The car. Yeah. Uh, are very interchangeable in this case. Right? Okay. Tengo una pregunta. What... Um, when do they use auto versus coche uh, and car? Hello? It's, it's, I, uh, uh, yeah. As I said, I normally use carro. Uh, coche is used, you know, coche is normally used in Spain. Or, um, 
but normally I use Cairo. It just depends on where you're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, um, <clears throat> Manish, it's, it's regional, it's colloquial, it's slang. Um, you know, I parked my ride. I parked my ride beside the school. Uh, where do you hear that? Automobile. I parked my automobile beside the school. We all know what that means, but when do we hear it? Never. Right. But, but caro, caro, anywhere you say that, and it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look. I know. This. I know it doesn't mean anything, but I used to hear in Los Angeles all the time. Donde está tu rampla? Where's your car? Rampla? A rampla. Yeah. What does that mean? Car. It means car or automobile. Automobile. Carro. Coche. It's just a different palabra. Yeah. Rampla. That rampa is not un carro. Okay. Uh, so let's not learn that word as carro because it's something different. Rampa. No, what is, rampla. What is it? Rampa. rampla. Igual, it's the same. <laughs> rampa, rampla. But it's a different thing. It's like uh, like an elevation. This can be wood or it can be like a bridge. It's an elevation. Uh, like a, a normally, ramp. it's like 45 degrees normally. So cars go like just or uh -huh. go up or down. Uh, Google that. You can share the image if you look for Rampla. Yeah. Or if you have played with uh, with these cars, how is the name of these? Hot Wheels cars, you know, the Ramplas is where the cars go when they are playing, normally the vertical ones. So that's a Rampla, but it's not a car. So, Wait, so that <clears throat> that must be very reasonable, re yeah. regional, Paul. <laughs> so. Well, no, I'm just saying, because I yeah. hear it all the time. Well, I just thank you. I'm not. It, it's kind of like that, you know. The bajos underneath, below. I mean, there's uh -huh. different ways to say carro coche. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's thank regional, you. but I'm just saying that I hear that a lot of times. That's uh -huh. that's not. If it's probably uh, wrong. I'm sure it is. No, no. It, if you're in L.A., it's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. You, you, I mean, it's the same know. thing if you're, you know, you say in Mexico, a mesero's a waiter. But you go to Guatemala, they call them Hovens. I don't know, but that's what it's called. Okay. <laughs> James is full down. Uh huh. Ah. See, that's a rampla. Uh huh. Oh, ramp. A ramp. <laughs> a ramp. Yeah. That's a rampla. Yeah. Uh huh. Ramp. It's early. Huh. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. Okay. How do we? This is important. Okay, I still had a question. I sure. I was interrupted when I was talking before. I don't I don't know what happened, but I still had a question about um the bajo and bajo. Okay. Because they both seem to um mean under or short, like if you're saying um minus zero or something for the weather, it's bajo. Uh -huh. Bajo. Okay, let's let's talk about that. Bajo and debajo. Um, y abajo. Some people say abajo. What's that? Abajo de. And abajo. And abajo. Right. Debajo, abajo. Okay, when do we use what? We're talking about temperature, you use bajo. Mm -hmm. Bajo is below, below zero, bajo de zero, zero. Um, when else would you use bajo? When you're talking about someone's height, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're saying yeah. the person's short or something? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... What about quality, lower quality, less quality? De baja calidad. Is that correct? I, I assume that's correct. <laughs> if you're talking about an item or something that is. Okay, so it's not baja calidad? Sí, de baja calidad. De baja.
um, that is a very good question, Julie. Um, I'm not sure if there are specific rules. I think, again, this is a great example of using examples to get used to what sounds right in, in different uh, sentences. Um, we, uh, Asalia, uh, we should do a, a scenario for bajo and abajo and debajo. Mm. Okie dokie. She's already working on it. That's that's actually what sparked today's lesson was oh, our conversation. What, that's what happened. Exactly that. Okay, got it. Encima de, arriba de. Never mind. You guys are in front of me. Okay. Can I, <laughs> can I also make a suggestion on um, maybe quedar and quedarse and when to use it and the the differences in the meaning when it becomes reflexive or even the verb echar. There's so many uses for it. So Quedar, I don't know. quedarse. Yeah. Um, and echar. Uh -huh. For sure. Okay. I think Bryce was making some notes. <laughs> I think so. Okay. okay. I I want to know how to say cookie jar. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things. Get your hand out of the cookie jar. <laughs> okay. El taro de galleta. All right. So somebody, somebody jump in there. El taro, uh, el taro de galletas está encima del Nevada. Close. Yes, very. Hmm. Okay, say that last word there, Chet. No, I don't know. De, de Nevada. Nevada. Oh, okay. You're using a different uh, a different word. How do you say refrigerator? Refrigerator. Refrigerator. Uh, took the hot one. Nevera. Okay, re refri. Anna, has, refri, taught, yeah. Anna <laughs> has taught me. A like, refri, yeah. Anna has told me like 50 times. James, call it, just, call it, just call it refri. 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 <laughs> okay, just like we say fridge, right? There's a short version. Oh, see. But yeah, the problem with nevera is like in a lot of countries, nevera is the one where you put ice or make ice. The freezer, you know, the freezer, the freezer. right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. so. Nevera is the freezing part of the refrigerator. So if you say to someone like ponerlo en la nevera, it might put in the fridge instead of the <laughs> refri. So mm -hmm. okay. So Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So what's the word, Anna, that you just said you can use for refrigerator? Shorter Refri. than? Refri. Refri. This you... one here. Oh, Refri. Refri. Okay. Refri. Bueno. Yeah. Much easier. Easy, right? <laughs> ah, okay, sí. Espero frente al supermarket. All right. So Refri is, uh, it, it's the short one, just like we say fridge instead of refrigerator. Okay, everybody, if you're practicing with your Spanish speaking partner, you can practice refrigeradora, but help them say refrigerator. Okay, para los uh, hispanohablantes, ustedes pueden practicar también uh, refrigerator. Y, y para yeah. nosotros, refrigeradora es difícil. Es difícil. Okay, get your hand out of the cookie jar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so we have here tus manos. Do, do I have to use plural, Anna? Tus manos, your hands, get your hands. You can see you don't want huh? Aleja tus manos, aleja tu mano. Yeah, both you can use both. Mano, tus manos. Okay. Okay, either one. All right. And we can also say, get your hands out. But usually <laughs> it's just one hand. 
Okay. Uh, and, uh, what cookie jar are you talking about? <laughs> getting cookies. <laughs> getting cookies. All right. Good. All right. Te espero frente al supermercado. Excuse me, James. Is yes. is there a difference between cookies and crackers? For us, there is. I am. I know. I'm eating some right now. Uh huh. Are you eating cookies or crackers? Crackers. Okay. So we, know, um, in inglés, hay una diferencia entre cookies y crackers, and it's very clear for us, right? A cookie is sweet, you know, like a Chips Ahoy or Oreos or chocolate chip or whatever. A cracker is uh, more dry, usually salty, like a Ritz or a saltine. En español, um, hay una diferencia entre cookie and cracker? Galletas? Galleta dulce, galleta salada. Ah, it's the okay. same. Entonces, Carol? Aquí, la respuesta. Saltine. Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, if you say oh. galletas, it can be anything. But yeah, then you can specify, you know. Galletas no, dulces, no, no, galletas no. saladas. Thank For you. example, uh, yes. las galletas saladas, you hear a lot that, because we call them by, uh, for the brand's name, like soda, galleta soda, or sodas. Mm -hmm. But, oh, uh, chips ahoy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Ahoy. I like to hear you say that in Spanish. <laughs> Chips Ahoy. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the uh the ability and Sherlingo favorite cookie. <laughs> it, it is absolutely our it's the cookies we share. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I eat them because James cannot eat those yeah. cookies. Anna eats mine for me. Yes. Okay. Um Te espero, what's that mean? Oh I will wait. Wait. Yep. I'll I'll wait. What? Oh, te espero frente. I'll wait for you. Yes. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Yeah. I wait for you in front of the card. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, I'll wait for you in front, in front of the supermarket. For us, we need the word in. Okay. Who would be tempted to say, te espero al frente? I can see that. I've heard people mm -hmm. try and use that. Yeah. It's not. So you Wait. can say it? I'm confused. You hear some people too many say words. in frente. <laughs> Enfrente, is that okay? Enfrente. Te espero enfrente, al frente. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> but I hear something that you can know, uh, something that you can, uh, you have to notice is uh, the construction that goes al frente. Okay, al frente del, al frente, enfrente. Because this is frente al, so but this this two is in frente del. Okay. Hmm. Download when when Anna posts this document. Download it. Have a look at it a few times, right? Uh, and and just recognize that. Any of these three options is okay, and you're going to hear them at different times. Mm. But there's frente al, al frente del, or en frente del. And the, those are the phrases that mean for us in front of. Mm. What about del, um, delante? Why, is, why can't that be used? Delante del. Maybe it just isn't, or maybe it means something. <clears throat> okay, so what's the difference? 
between Enfrente and Delante. <clears throat> I'll just say I hear with like with, like with the first example. Uh, okay, Delante is like going. It's not. It's the direction. It, yes, it's you like the time kind of you. You're going in front, but it's like you're going before. You're going before uh, me. That's that's why I I would use. I wouldn't use it in this example. In the first one, we were talking about a person going, you know, you're, <clears throat> you know, it's you know, when you go. But I think Anna is telling us that you can use it to, to mean in front of the supermarket, right? That it's okay. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't know. It's better, no, I, I, I was just writing what James said. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, te espero delante del supermercado. I don't think we say that, but Raquel and Azalia can correct me if I'm wrong or if they have heard something different. But I always use, and I have heard, that delante de una persona, but never delante yeah. de, de algo. Okay. I just right. I was just writing this, what uh, James okay. explained. So that, that makes sense to me because I would not say I'm before the store. Or I'm, um, you know, go mm -hmm. before you go before me. You but you go before the store. Doesn't really ring true. Does that help, Carol? Oh yeah, thank you very much. That's very helpful. Awesome. Sorry, well, I have so many questions, but I find this a confusing area. Bring it on, Nancy Founder Camera. <laughs> Yay, Nancy! Good to see you. All right. <clears throat> um, so, what are what are some other things that you do with uh, en frente, al frente? Remember the Japanese lady. What do you? How do you say in the front of the line, or at the front of the line? Al principio de la fila, al inicio de la fila, de primero en la fila, en la fila. Okay, so it's not the front of the line, it's First al line. principio. Primero. Al principio, al inicio, de primero. The beginning. No, de primero. De primero, the first one in the line. On the line. Mm. Okay. El primero. Uh, can you fill those in the Spanish here? Uh, the first one sure. in, in line um, at the front of the nine. Um, <laughs> okay. Oops, sorry. In the fila. Yeah. Okay, so there's some other um, fronts that you might see. Um, I was asking a question about number five. Do you mind real quick? I, I think I was on mute. Um, the you have three different responses. Are all of those correct? Yes, that's the these three things. That's what we were saying there, Julie. Is that um, in front of? Uh, but you need to be careful with. Um, frente al versus al frente del or en frente del. So if you put the al ahead of frente, you need the del in there. But all three mean the same thing. Gotcha. Okay. And right when you're saying at the, at the front of the line, can you use cola as well? Yes. Fila? No, I was saying cola. Can you use cola? The tail? Or the, the end of the line, yeah, tail. Yeah, in, in Spain, they say that. La cola, la cola. Oh, okay. <laughs> in España? Okay, I have not heard that. Can I do number six? Sure. Are you ready? Go for it. Um, hay un perro um, en... En el medio de la calle. 
en el medio. Okay. So, the middle. We, we are tempted to say el medio. Yeah. Right? Because uh -huh. we want to put the in there. But you don't need it. Oh, okay. okay. En medio. En medio. De la cala. What is mitad? M I T A D. En la mitad. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So there's a difference between middle and half, right? Okay. Like half a glass, half a jar. Uh -huh. Okay. Half, uh, so it's not, we can say, we, well, I guess we could say half a street, but we wouldn't. <laughs> right? Maybe, maybe, half a dog. maybe in some countries, in mine, we can about, say that. How about half a dog? There's half a dog. No half a dog. There's half a dog. Half a dog in <laughs> Poor dog. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. It's a great question because, you know, in medio de, but we hear la mitad, right. Centro. The center of the street? I suppose. Okay. Great. These are great. You guys are. Makes you think. All right. Se me cayó. Se me cayó. All right. Hey, hold, hold on one, one second. I just got a question for, okay. for, for Anna and Isaiah. Um, oh, uh, Raquel. Raquel. <laughs> no, because no, <laughs> have you guys ever heard anyone say, está en la mitad de la calle? Yeah. Okay, okay. That's what I said. In my country, we say okay, that. I'm okay, not, okay. I don't know in other countries. I don't know in Mexico. No, that's fine. That's fine. I just, that's and in fine. mine, we say, it's in the middle of the calle. Okay. For in the middle of the street. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, Raquel, probably the same thing. Right. In Mexico, también. Salia? So, no. Mitad? I say in the middle, in medio. En medio. Okay. Depends on where you are. There's a lot of there's a lot a lot of stuff that's not wrong. Just like here in English, there's a lot of stuff that's not wrong. It's just more common in one place than another. Okay, I love the idea of of this. Right, and this is kind of like the, the I hurt my arm, okay? All right, you don't do it on purpose, right? You don't hurt your arm on purpose. And what what's happened, somebody translate this. I, I think it's, I dropped my phone in the furniture, between the furniture, I dropped it in the furniture. Mm -hmm. Se me el cellular. I dropped my phone in los muebles. Okay, los so, muebles, the furniture, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so in English, I drop my cell phone or phone between uh, like the maybe, furniture. Between the furniture. Uh, mm -mm. Okay, so why did you do that, Paul? Because it implies that you did it on purpose. <laughs> No, because I know uh, a mueble is a piece of furniture. Uh -huh. So, but here's what I'm trying to say: I dropped my phone like into the furniture, into the ocean, into the toilet. Okay, it in in English it doesn't sound weird to say I dropped my phone into the toilet. Okay, but in, yeah. if we say that exactly, Anna, how would I say that in Spanish? Literally, like I did it on purpose. I dropped my phone. Oh, okay. Tire, tire, o bote. Okay. Tire, bote. Tire. Okay. 
I, I really want to dwell on this for just a second, okay? Because in English, we say, I dropped my phone. In Spanish, literally, you'd say, tiré el cellular. Like, I threw my phone in the toilet. Mm -hmm. It's something you did on, on purpose, right? But in Spanish, this construction that Bryce has here, the reflexive, right? Se me cayó. I dropped. It dropped. The phone dropped itself. The phone dropped itself between or into the furniture. Can you also say the cell phone fell between the furniture? Uh, in English, for sure. Yeah. Okay. And that's and that is a much closer translation, Charlotte, than I dropped my phone. Right. Right. Because. Um, Send the right. Send the right. The, the cell phone dropped between or into the furniture. Yes. So accidental, re accidental, reflexive. Yes. Se, se me cayó, se me perdió, se me olvidó. Keep going. Se, se me quemó, you know, just whatever, you know. Right. Um, the idea that an accident happened, something happened. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> I didn't throw it into the toilet on purpose. You this know, was, one day I was cooking. Uh -huh. <laughs> And I, I think I was talking with James, probably, and I was warming a tortilla, okay? And se me quemo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, totally burned. And so since then, my daughter say, Mama, tú no sabes cocinar porque se te quemó la tortilla. <laughs> so for her, I don't know how to cook or I don't know how to cook because she remembers that day, you know, when the tortilla was burning. It's not Okay, no. So, but what my point is, and what you say is with that thing, okay? Se te quemó la tortilla. Se me quemó la tortilla. Is that, that thing. The reflexive. You don't know how to cook because the tortilla burnt itself. Yeah. You say, <laughs> Stad? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Does this idea, this concept make sense to everybody? Because when you get this, it really helps going forward. It's Actually. also super, super, super common. <laughs> yeah. You're going to hear it all the time. Se me cayó. Se me cayó. Se me olvidó. Se me quemó. What else did you say, James? Se me olvidó, se me quemó, se me cayó. Uh, se me perdió. Right? Same idea. I didn't lose it on purpose. Mom, I lost my phone. Why'd you do that? Okay, excellent. Moving on, moving on. All right, Bob Barker time. Yep. Or seven time. Uh huh. <laughs> What's in, in the box? box. What's, in, what's in the box? What's inside the box? Ken. Hey, K I Nandro uh, in the in the calle. Uh -huh. In the uh -huh. in la, uh -huh. Say that last. Uh -huh. Say that last uh -huh. word. There you go. Uh -huh. in K I Nandro de la caja. Right. Yeah. Dentro de. And, uh, is there a difference yeah. between dentro and adentro? Should we use one and not the other, Bryce? I would say no, because I hear both of them used the same way. Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lo mismo. I think Anna just nailed it. I think yeah, technically yeah. you're going to hear <laughs> dentro in in Europe, but there. This is this is great. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. So regional again. It's a regional thing. 
Does the same yeah. apply to uh, fuera, la fuera? Afuera. Uh, outside. Okay. Fuera, fuera and fuera uh, and uh, afuera. afuera. Okay. Same. Outside. Outside. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's outside. Yeah. What's outside the box? Can we use <laughs> fuera and afuera? It, well, it makes no sense to ask that. Uh, if you're in the box, it makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what's outside the box? I mean, you don't study the reflexive no verbs. You've heard, you've, heard, you've heard think outside the box? Well, what's outside? Okay, so so let's let's say the house. Okay, happy. Well, it's not that I, was, I wasn't happy, it just like makes no sense. Okay, entonces, um, can we say fuera and afuera interchangeably? Great question, Doug. What's outside the house? Que, que, How about what's outside the house? Que fuera de la casa. Que fuera mm -hmm. das, casa. Que right. fuera. Que. Sometimes you'll hear people use fuera as a command, like get outside. Fuera. <laughs> fuera la casa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Fuera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Instead of putting a sta in there, can you just say que fuera de la casa? Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. That's like saying what outside instead of what is outside. Mm. Right? What outside the house instead of what is outside mm. the house? Que mm. fuera. All right. Um, Bryce, are there any of these that you particularly want us to see? Like, you, we? you always have some real. Um, well, I don't. Well, in this case, Jim. I mean, I don't. I th I mean, all of them are important, and, and it's one of those things that. There are different ones. I don't know who's familiar with what. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't. You know, I don't know what's more. In this case, I don't. Okay. It's kind of um, hard. To so, say more important can we do it. one with Encima Day or Arriba Day? Okay, Encima and Arriba. Okay. Uh, well, sure, Steve. Give me, give us an example. All right. Um. Let's just pop it in here. Give us an example. When would you encima de? And what was? And uh, arriba de. So above. Uh, arriba. It's two R's, isn't it? Arriba. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So give us some examples. Uh, when do we use? Give us an encima de sentence. Um, well, that that was one of my questions right so okay. when i think of above um, um or if something is over or on top of above uh the top of the fridge right it's on top and, of the table or yeah, yeah. That's it. I, you know, I'm glad you brought. What's that? No, I was going to say for on the table, that's not necessarily for encima, but you know, sometimes people will say sobre la mesa mm -hmm. or está en la mesa or, you know, the, or en la mesa. So, so this is every bit as much para los hispanohablantes, okay? Para ustedes, a veces decimos the light is above the table, pero signi significa. Que no está en la, en la mesa. Es 
encima de. It's above the table, like not on top of the table. And it's not on the table. Does that make sense? Yes. So for me, that make it easier. So here's the, like the light and here's the table. So it's not contact. No hay contacto. So that's, for me, that's above. Yes. Arriba o encima. For us also, above the table. So there's there's a light above my desk. Oh. Right? But it's not on my desk. But what about if it's setting on, like a lamp is setting on the table? Exactly. It's right. It would say the light say or the lamp. Go ahead. Light Bryce. is on the table. Sobre. Sobre la mesa. Sobre or la mesa. Or está en la mesa. Mm -hmm. Or en la mesa. So that's interesting. Está en la Está en la mesa. How do you say the light is in the table? Dentro. Right? Because technically it'd be the same thing. Right? Dentro. <laughs> Adentro? Or... Adentro. Well, it, well, if you could put a light inside a table. <laughs> well, you could. But, but, you know, sometimes you see tables that have lights in the table, right? Mm -hmm. not, not a lot, those but you do see really them. Fancy. Because I've never seen <laughs> those, Yeah, those. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Uh, this is all great. Thank you, Bryce. Um, okay. I really highly encourage everybody to uh, grab this uh, PDF file when, when Anna posts it, shares it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, do the do the rest of the examples. Try them, practice them with your practice partner. Um, both ways, make new sentences, example framework. Um, uh, take the example, but change it a little bit. Make it your own. Make it something for your job or for your family, your life, whatever. Okay. Entonces. Preguntas? I have a question. Sure. In a, in a, I don't recall the number of the example, but it was about hands. Okay. And um, I've always seen hands referred to in the neutral, uh, los manos, as opposed to tooth manos or mis manos. Okay, good uh, question. That is a good question. Okay, uh, where's the so your hands out of the cookie jar? Yeah, okay, this one, right? Yeah. Cookie jar, get your hand, your hand. Okay, so um, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but what I think of in this situation is the difference in this command, it's get your hand. That's it that is specifically your hand, right? Mm -hmm. So we're using goose, but kind of like that reflexive idea of the salt fell, the telephone fell, it did it itself, right? Um, uh, there, there's an idea that I'm going to wash the hands, right? You, I think you can say my hands, but you can say the hands. Um, Anna, help me out. When would you use los manos instead of las manos, los manos? There, there's no los. There's no, los. Las. There's no los. There's no los. There's no los. Las manos. Las. las manos son mujeres. Las Femenino. Manos. Las manos. Okay. Mis so manos. La you, mano. When do you use las and when do you use tus? Like if you're talking to Isabella, do you say wash tus manos or las manos? La. Lavate. Lavate. Lavate las manos. Mm -hmm. Lavate las. So, um, you're going to hear this, Charlotte. You're going. You're absolutely going to hear this. Like, think of the Italians in the movies. Like, wash of the hands. Wash of the hands. You know, it's the, <laughs> it's the hands instead of your hands. Manos. Las manos. 
Um, uh, anybody, like my feeling is either one's correct, but if they're um, Anna or Asalia, um, is there a right and wrong? Much more common. Oh, the common for me, if I say lavate, like you already know I'm telling to you, like referring to you, lavate las manos. Yes. So for me, it would not be necessary tus manos. We can use it, but I say lavate las manos. Thank you. Thank you. Already implied in the lavate. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Okay, I think that's an excellent question, Charlotte. Um, I don't, I don't know of any rules, but what Asalia just said about, I think, makes a lot of sense. Cool. Any others? Yeah. I had one other. I had one other question. Sure. Uh, or maybe that uh, right. okay. one other. Uh, when is it appropriate to say, um, instead of que esta or I, to say qual, qual esta, qual es? Also a great question. Uh, in English, we also say, we, we often say, what is? And in Spanish, a lot of times they say, which is? Okay, and... Maybe Bryce has a rule for that. Do you have a rule? For me, it's... <laughs> you know, just... <laughs> um, um, think about the numbers, okay? Like, cuál es one thing, cuáles son varias cosas, que es one thing, easy. Hmm. Que es una cosa, cuál es una cosa, cuáles son varias cosas. Pero cuál es... Uh... Well, in English, it's hard because what's your name? What's your name? What is your name? But most of the time, I'm very tempted to say which is right because I'm seeing two or three options, but I say what's right because, you know, that's what I hear. To say, but actually, which is right would be more correct. If you have three, right. That's what I think, but most people say what's right. If you have yes. if you have three options, it's more correct to say which is And if you have two yes. options, it's plural for us, it's what is, you know, but you don't say which is. You say what is. Make a choice. If you distinguish between one or two or three objects, you're supposed to use the word which. You know, which, yeah, is, that's the, which yeah. is bigger. Which is, um, uh, which would you like? That is a general rule, Carol, but it doesn't work for every single example. That's the only that is, thing. It's just a general rule, but it doesn't yeah. work for everything. So, but Peggy. It's, um, um, it's hard, but uh, again, example, cuál es, um, cuál es su número, cuál es, oh, give us some examples of when to use cuál. Use cuál. Right, what's your problem? <laughs> what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> you have, I have so, I have so many, Bryce. I, I have so good. many uh, that you have to use which is your problem <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> What were we going to say, Doug? I well, use qual if you're uh, uh, choosing um, among a finite set of alternatives. A finite set of alternatives. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's, uh, in, there's some engineer speak. I love that. That was just beautiful. <laughs> that was. It really appealed to me. <laughs> uh huh. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that helped much, but uh, sometimes when I'm asking a question, sure. Sometimes Go when ahead. I'm asking a question, I'll say "cuál es um, la diferencia entre you know libro y libraria or something." I don't know, but I would say "cuál es libraria." And I, I'll ask the question like "cuál es la diferencia," and I've never been corrected, so I, I think that's right. Right? That's right. That's right. In that okay, right. that, is, that is a great example. Um, Thank you. 
¿Cuál es la diferencia entre biblioteca y librería? Sí. Um, in English, that doesn't make sense. Which mm. is the difference between the library and the bookstore? Right? Um, but in Spanish... Hey, that's a great example of what we were saying. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? Between Ooh, a library so and a bookstore. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre una librería y una biblioteca? But you're saying para, what para nosotros, things eh, is what, what is, I, I what know. Is favorite, what, what is your favorite movie? Not, which is the difference? It's right. kind of confusing because you are saying what is the difference. You're not saying which is the difference. So, because mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't make sense to us in English if we said which is, well, I mean, I guess I guess it could, but if, we, if I'm <laughs> asking a class, I'll, I'll maybe like probably a different entry. Right, I think, you know? and, and so what's difficult is when you're choosing between like you know which is better a library mm -hmm. or a bookstore that's a question like which one is better right but what's the difference is not the same thing okay right. that is a great question julie and our answer is going to be lots of examples lots of examples and <laughs> it will get you'll get mm -hmm. comfortable saying cuál es la diferencia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes that, our sometimes our answers are not very scientific. That, that's a good no, that's a good point because you do get used to saying certain things like you already know that what's the difference cuál es, you know, do you, so you your mind, you're not gonna you you know it now, so you, you're not gonna confuse it. Can't slide if you know you're not gonna say that, you know, or you know what's your favorite movie? Cuál es cuál es tu película favorita o preferida, however you want to say it. You you know you get used to some of them because they don't all follow the exact. Because I've tried to find some kind of way to where they all follow like a certain rule, and I just can't do it. <laughs> right. I have one question. Can we go back to the Encima Day and Sobre just a second? So if we're talking about, say, a check, el cheque, you can say either el cheque is sobre la mesa, el cheque is Encima Day la mesa. Both of those es, are correct? Está, está. Está, está, está. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. Está Encima de la mesa, sobre la mesa, en la mesa. Cualquiera es correcta. Let me write it. El cheque... Okay, and if it were some weird situation where it's dangling from the ceiling, that would could be Ariba. No, no. <laughs> no. What if it was just floating in space? Está, you will say, está flotando. Oh, okay. Okay. I was just trying to figure out when you would use Ariba. Yes. Um, I look down. No, you, you were right. Up. It's it's arriba, it's encima. I'm sorry, right? <laughs> Go ahead. No, what'd you say? Go ahead. You were saying something. I no, you. it's all right. No, it's all right. I was saying, if you're saying, like, look up, you know, that's arriba. Like, a, mira, oh, arriba. like, look up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look up. Mira. Okay. Arriba. There's a there's a thing. The check is not up the desk. It's above the desk. Mm, okay. But not up the desk. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, you can okay. use a reba for um, a position if you had, if you would ask a question. ¿Dónde está mamá? Mamá está arriba. She's up. Yeah. She's upstairs, yeah. yeah. Upstairs, yeah. 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 Great. All right, everybody, you did good. You did good. All right. Um, thank you again for being here. Um, thank you, Bryce. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Asalia. Um, and uh, everyone. All right. Adios a todos. Adios. 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 Adios.
I still love this cat baby. <laughs> I just knew that that he said the same thing in Spanish because you know I watched that movie in Spanish, so I thought he said something different in English. But James told me that he says hasta la vista, hasta baby. In the English version of the movie, yeah, I know that. The, so the cool. Terminator says it in Spanish. Hasta yeah, la vista, it's, it's so amazing. Hasta la vista. Now, as just as long as everybody understands it. Technically, that's not correct, but yes, that's what <laughs> Hasta la vista. Mm -hmm. Okay, chicos, cuídense. Nos vemos. All right, everybody. Have a beautiful week. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. All right. More.